All righty, good evening, Temecula. My name is Kathy Sizemore, and I am the chairperson for the Temecula Community Services Commission. Tonight is Monday, April the 10th, 2023. Time is 6 p.m., and I'm calling this meeting to order. I'm going to request that Commissioner Castro please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Commissioner Castro. Last mayor, I had a low seat. Now with the new mayor, I have a high seat I have to climb into. And I, I kind of thought maybe I should switch chairs, but I think Zach outranks me, so I'll, I'll leave it. I'll climb into it. I thought about doing that, but then like I figured Zach will get here and sit down and then like, it'll be, yeah. So I'll just leave it where I'll climb into my chair. All righty. We are going to start our meeting tonight by asking our wonderful Commission Secretary, Tracy Kortz, to please do a roll call. Okay. Commissioner Castro. Here. Commissioner Hawks. Here. Commissioner Kingsburg. Here. Chairperson Sizemore. Here. Okay, and we are all present. I believe Vice Chair Audie will be joining us shortly. Yes. And will, when he arrives, will you make sure that the record reflects... Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Do we have any public comment tonight? No, we do not. All right. Then we will dispense with the reading of the rules. And we're going to move, move up our business section of our agenda because we want to be mindful of staff that is here to give us reports tonight. We know they've put in a long day already and they want to go home. They deserve to go home. So we will be starting with receiving and filing a uh, urban forest management plan update. We have Stacy Fox here to present the urban forest management plan to us. Stacy, welcome. Good evening, commissioners and staff. It's been a little while since I've been up here to update you on the urban forest management plan, so this evening I'll just kind of run through uh, where we're at. So a little background on the urban forest management plan. Uh, this came about from a Prop 68, which is the California Drought Water Parks uh, Coastal Protection Outdoor Access for All Act of 2018. Uh, this provided funds for CAL FIRE to administer uh, different uh, grant opportunities. Uh, CAL FIRE was awarded a total of $13.5 million uh, various for funding for various urban and community forestry projects throughout California. Uh, back in fiscal 2018-2019. Uh, uh, CAL FIRE Urban and Community Forestry Program works to optimize the benefits of trees throughout multiple objectives such as the Urban Forest Management Plan. The city was awarded a grant from Prop 68 and CAL FIRE to complete an Urban Forest Management Plan and Tree Inventory Update. Uh, the total estimate of this project cost, including uh, the city provided uh, a 26% cash match for personnel expenses, supplies, and uh, materials, and educational outreach was just under $440,000. And then uh, our consultant, Dudek, was retained uh, to complete this urban forest management plan. So just a quick... Uh, definition of what is an urban forest ma management plan. Uh, UFMP is basically a roadmap that creates the shared vision uh, and future of tree canopy within the community. And it's also a tailored plan uh, that guides a proactive, effective approach to tree management and provides the maximum long-term benefits for our community. And a couple important definitions is urban forest. Uh, those are trees that make up uh, both public and private trees within our community. And a city tree is a tree within the public right-of-way, which we call street trees. Uh, all our trees in the por uh, parks, uh, city-maintained slopes, medians, and at all city facilities. Uh, why is the urban forest management plan important? Because trees benefit 
in the community in many different ways. And they help filter our air, they capture rainwater, provide many socio and economical benefits for our community, um, save energy for our residents and business owners um, when they're strategically planted in proper locations, and they help combat climate change. So in developing the Urban Forest Management Plan, there's uh, quite a process um, that our consultant team went through. Um, they interviewed city staff, elected officials, they um, we conducted an inventory update to all our street trees, collected all the information on tree species, where they're located, how big they are, what their, the health of that tree. Um, they've reviewed maintenance practices, our current maintenance practices of our trees, reviewed our standards and details for uh, tree planting and tree maintenance, uh, looked at our internal operations, looked at all our planning documents, looked at all our policy ordinances, and they reached out to all our stakeholder and gathered input. Uh, at the beginning of this was at the start of the pandemic. Uh, so many of our meetings were held via Zoom uh, with meetings with stakeholders, including city staff, elected official, community leaders, and HOA members. Uh, this, this, these interviews were important because we gathered uh, input from a diverse group that really illuminated the core values of the community and informed key development process for the UFMP. We also did uh, several different methods of community outreach. We did an online survey, which we had 702 responses. We created some educational pamphlets, held virtual meetings. We outreached to local community organizations. And we did several tabling events uh, at the Chilled, Chilled in the Park event we had, and several at the Old Town Farmers Market and Vail Ranch Farmers Market. We also had a tree planting event for Arbor Day, and we had our first uh, Temecula Urban Forest Summit, and we developed uh, an internal Temecula working group. Part of the data we collected we um, analyzed and saw, figured out we maintain or inventoried over 30,000 trees that are under this city's budget and tree management responsibility. 87% um, of these trees were classified as immature and young. Um, these trees, the current inventory collects 26, 262 tons of carbon dioxide. Uh, they gather rainwater, remove pollutants, and our existing tree canopy covers approximately 10% of our city. These are the city managed trees with the remaining 90% on uh, private properties. Uh, our consultant identified that our city ordinance and uh, need to be updated to align with um, International Society of Agriculture guiding principles for tree care uh, best management practices. Um, we looked at our current tree spending and did I identify that we are adequate at our current inventory um, compared to other cities. Um, that city tree age, uh, as the city's trees age, their maintenance needs will increase. And along with that, the maintenance funds will need to increase with that to, to continue to ensure that the urban forest will be sustainable. And the UFMB provides long-term tree planting and canopy cover goals. And um, so we did create the final product of the UFMP, which we're wrapping up this month. Uh, we plan to present to council at the April 25th meeting. And following the city ordinance revision, we plan to take this to council for, uh, for official adoption at the council meeting. So. Oops. And there was, sorry, this is a little out of order, but there was a public review period back in uh, December. And that concludes my uh, presentation. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Thank you, Stacy. We appreciate having you here tonight. We will go ahead and start with uh, questions, and we will start with Commissioner Kingsford. 
Thank you, Stacy. Um, really enjoy hearing about our trees and uh, enjoy the trees in our community. I'd venture to say that we probably have a uh, strong number of trees per capita compared to uh, other most other Riverside County cities for sure. So that's great. Uh, no real question. Actually, one question came up, and that was kind of a talk, speaking of sustainability. Sustainability of this program. It sounded like there was a funding source, some city matching funds. Is this something we can? expect to continue where there'll be up more opportunities for grants or with the city maintained funding would you expect uh, yeah part of the urban forest management plan kind of identifies what our funds need to be and what we should be asking council for uh, along with we're always looking at grant opportunities for planting trees um, you know developing different sort of plans and and recycling you know tree wood and Right. So regardless of the, any uh, renewal for grants, that this could be considered ongoing request yes. to maintain, great, to maintain what we have. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Commissioner Huff? Thank you, Stacy. Good to have you back. Thanks. Out of the 30,000 trees, how do you identify, you talked about the public right-of-way trees belong to the city. Can you explain a little? Yeah, the public right-of-way trees, these are typically the front yard trees in a residential community uh, that are within the right-of-way, which is approximately that first uh, 12 feet from face of curb into the property. So those are technically the city-managed trees. They're still property owner trees, but they fall within the right-of-way, so they fall in our, our uh, responsibility of maintaining those trees and those public right-of-ways. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Castro? Thank you for the report. Uh, what were some of the recommendations from the company you hired to do this uh, plan? There, there is many. Uh, with this document. Oh, the top two or three. Yeah. Years. There's actually a, a full technical specification, which is about an 80 page document, yeah. and also a street tree master plan, which is kind of the really important one, is telling us what what kind of trees to put in what sort of spaces. So we, with the inventory, we know how many trees we're missing, we know how many trees are declining, and this is really is the plan of how do we replace the 3,500 missing trees that we have um, in an inventory. So it updates our tree species list based on uh, that plantable space within those zones. So that was a real important. Um, was there more of a move to native trees from what's currently there? Well, yes and no. Uh, we're looking for trees that uh, adapt or that grow well in our in Temecula, not Tem necessarily native because yeah. we have very few native trees in Temecula. Yeah. But we're looking at trees that perform well in our climate region. So. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Castro. Do you have any questions about trees, Gary? Thanks, Stacy. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. And I will say um, I had the pleasure and just really an honor to, to get to work with this team um, on this urban forest management plan. Um, one of the first things, honestly, I noticed when I came to Temecula when I was in my early 20s, coming uh, lived in Orange County, and when I first got off the freeway, honestly, one of the things I really noticed was the trees in Temecula, because here I had gone through Lake Elsinore and all this barren, dry and landscape, and to get to Temecula and see these beautiful large trees around the duck pond, it was um, something that's stayed in my memory. And so um, I've learned a lot being, you know, working with you guys, and learned a lot about um, how important trees are. There's a lot of benefits from trees that I didn't realize. And I'm really thankful to see that we worked on this. And I was impressed with the professionals that we had as part of the working team, as far as from Cal Fire, uh, Dudek, their um, professionals they had working on it. Um, it was just really uh, impressive. So thank you for all the work you've put into this. Because trees are important to parks. Trees are important to bike trails and active transportation covering the sidewalk. So thank you, Stacy. we appreciate right. you. You're welcome, thank you. All right, you can go home now. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> For our next item on our business agenda, 
we will be receiving and filing a uh, presentation on our workforce development and education programs. And we have Mr. Charles Walker with us tonight. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you and have you here with us tonight. Likewise. I've spoken to many of you uh, individually in some way, but uh, never together. Um, so we'll begin. My name is Charles Walker. I'm the Workforce and Education Policy um, Administrator. When we talk about our programs, we're talking about youth um, development. And we've broken it down into either enrichment, education, employment, and recreation. And when we talk about youth, it's not, it just doesn't stop at middle school or high school. Our um, table for youth goes all the way up into the 20s, okay, because we're still allowing opportunities for our um, vocational students and our college graduates, okay? So let's begin. We host a whole bunch of, uh, of these enrichment and uh, education programs, and this is one of our ones that we're really proud of. This is our Temecula Valley College and Vocational Fair. It's one of the largest of its kind in the country. We host about 300 to 350 college and vocational schools throughout the country, and we even have some internationally from Mexico and France and Canada. Um, Pre-pandemic, we were hosting about 10,000 uh, visitors to the mall. Uh, and these visitors, they use something called IntelliTrack. And they can track how many people are there using um, cell phone pings, things like that. And 50% of the attendees were unique users, meaning first-time visitors to the mall. Uh, have any of you been to this event? Mm -hmm. Well, in the fall, um, we will be in person again. For the last couple of years, um, we haven't been in person due to uh, situation. Um, we're very proud of this event. It's the second busiest day at the mall behind Black Friday. Our youth innovators. This was a program that we started because we have a lot of people in the community wanting high school internships. Because our directors and our departments really don't have the capability or the capacity to monitor high schoolers, we've created this group and they really help with uh, planning and designing and implementing programs for our young people. And we count that as an internship. They can get community service credit, okay, and they're high schoolers. Next. Our junior STEM program. We've been doing this program for quite some time, uh, about 14, 15 years. Um, we allow middle schoolers the opportunity to come once a month to do an hour uh, lecture, a hands-on project. And uh, we really talk about all the different ways STEM affects their world. Very informal. Seems to be very popular. Rocktober. You can guess what month it's in. Uh, this is another opportunity for young people to come show their talents and their skills. We partner with the CRC and host it at the amphitheater there. Bands, uh, musicians, um, singers, jugglers, uh, just an, a positive outlet for our young people. Next. Science Fair. Uh, in the past, we've partnered with Abbott Laboratories and had the Science Fair there. Um, we are going to host it uh, at the Temecula Valley Entrepreneurs Exchange. And hopefully in the future, we'll um, offer it here at City Hall if we get the numbers. Uh, just these are all the different ways we're trying to uh, give these young people an outlet. Next. Youth Innovation Conference. This is a, a leadership conference for high schoolers. We get all the different leadership groups from ASBs to uh, church groups to um, our 
Youth Advisory Council, our innovators, come together for an afternoon, listen to some motivational speakers, work on leadership development games, and um, have some pizza, do a lot of team building, and uh, move on from there. Next. When we're talking about employment, sometimes, uh, and education, sometimes our vocational track students are left out. We've made a, a conscious decision and efforts to make sure our vocational track students are included in what we do. Our culinary program, which we partnered with MSJC, and we started this from scratch to the point where MSJC said, hey, we really want to be a part of what the city is doing. Um, how do we do that? Um, now they're able to get a certificate. They learn about safety, OSHA, cleaning properly, cutting, um, all the things that we take for granted when we go out to eat. Um, we work with EAT and Leah Bernardo, MSJC, and various people around the city and um, offer these programs to students. Next. Auto Extern Program, we're very proud of this program. We're proud of all our programs, but we're proud of this program. This is a partnership with our TVUSD CTE program, Career Technical Education. Once a young person completes their CTE automotive program at TVUSD, we partner with the city and local auto dealers and provide a paid externship. 90%, we've been doing this program for about seven years, six, seven years, and 90% of all the students that go through the program have been offered employment in the uh, auto industry, okay? And we're pretty proud of that. The, the other 10% either has decided to go on to um, college, moved away, or military. But everyone who 100% have, they have a plan. Next. Our construction program, very similar to our culinary program. Uh, we started this program from scratch, and they learn OSHA, uh, basic blueprint, um, reading, math skills, our soft skills, uh, tool safety, and now we're working with the area nonprofit to do some building, sheds, um, small, um, small buildings, and these people at the end have been offered jobs in the construction field. Once again, we've partnered with MSJC. They've come on and said, you guys are in the forefront of what you're trying to do here. Um, how do we become a part of that? Next. Leadership Academy, this is for high schoolers. This is a program that teaches cooking, CPR, uh, college essays, resumes. I, this is one of the things I like to say, the school district says parents should be teaching this stuff at home and parents are assuming this stuff should be taught at school. This is a summer camp. Uh, you see the, the times that we have up there and we've been doing this program for about 12 years. Next. Youth Entrepreneurs Program, another high school program in the summer, working with our Temecula Valley Entrepreneurs Exchange, teaching young people how to start their own businesses. Many of us have friends who say, oh, Billy really likes to draw, he'll probably have his own t-shirt company. And we find out that is not the case because a lot of young people don't know about the accounting, about the marketing, about the business plans, about raising capital, things like that. So as, while it's nice to say all that stuff around the dinner table, we have to be realistic. And this is a program that um, allows us to move from those conversations to actuality. Next. Junior STEM camp, we take what we've learned in our, uh, during the year, and really expand, it's a summer program for our middle schoolers and really expand opportunities for our middle schoolers to continue learning about the various areas in STEM. Next. Our internship fellowship program, 
this is a program that is extremely popular. Um, before the pandemic, we were going through several hundred, a couple hundred uh, a year. Uh, this is a program that cities like Detroit and Jacksonville uh, have called us and said, hey, how do you guys do this? How is this possible? And it's only possible because our, the leadership from our um, various departments, directors are opening their doors and letting these young people in to do these internships. And also our forward-thinking city council it, it really promotes this program as well. So this is a program that is uh, viewed across the country as being very successful. Next. Because we have so many interns and so many program participants, um, every year we have a mayor's intern appreciation luncheon. The mayor comes and thanks all the interns and program participants for giving back to the city. Uh, we provide a, a very nice lunch and uh, a keynote speaker. Next. Legal Scholars Program. This program is, is for college kids who are interested in getting into law school. This program has been recognized by the California State Bar President. Every year for the last eight years, the State Bar President comes to Temecula to have lunch with our participants. Uh, it's that position switches. He or she has said over those, that time that they have never seen a program like this offered by a city in the state of California. We have been doing this program for a long time now, and now we have actual attorneys who have graduated from this program and who are actual attorneys full time now. Next, Medical Career Pathways is a high school program that offers hands-on instruction for young people who are interested in going into the medical career. There's a lecture every week in the summer and a community health project. Next, the Future Physicians Program is for our college students, it's more expansive than our medical career pathways program, lecture series, community health project. And this program has a shadowing component because they are older. Our medical career pathways, since they're high schoolers, do not have a shadowing component due to insurance. When you ask these students, hey, what do you do on your shadowing? In the past, some have said, oh, I got to um, put a cast on. One person really took the air out of the room and they said, I got to call time of death. So these are real programs doing real things. And similar to our legal scholars program, we've been doing this program long enough now that we have actual doctors who have graduated from this city program. Next. Questions? All righty, thank you. Okay. Very thorough. I'm looking at your calendar you've given us here. You have a lot of activities throughout the whole year, and this is for, this is for 2023. Okay. And I, I, can, I assume that year to year, this is a pretty consistent what, what it looks like. Yes, yes. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and take, uh, start with questions from our commissioners. Commissioner Castro? Uh, thank you for the presentation. I don't have any questions. I'm just very impressed with the scope of the um, different types of uh, opportunities there are for, for people to take advantage of this program. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Holtz. Hi, Mr. Charles Walker. It's nice to meet you. Yes. My children, especially my son, goes to your STEM program. He's very interested and very excited every time him and his friends, I think he wants to go to the summer camp. Wonderful, yes. wonderful. And I'm very impressed with the scope of the program from middle schoolers all the way up to undergraduate students. And I see also the variety. You have vocational, you have professional. So I just thought this is a great opportunity for young people in our community to have a career path 
they can start from middle school. So thank you for what you do, and I really look forward to seeing you in person in those programs. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Kingsley? Thank you very much for all the information. I was trying to keep up with you, and I, I, I was almost writing on the, on the counter here because I ran out of, ran out of paper, so thank you. Uh, this is a great, great summary. Um, really, really impressed. Um, my, my questions or clarifications are just kind of a curiosity thing. I'm, I'm coming off a 35-year career in the school district, um, working primarily in the high schools, and I was pleased to see there is some, obviously, some connection and collaboration with, uh, with the Temecula Valley Unified School District. I was kind of curious about the science fair because that historically was always, I mean, I, I, I've got a lot of tread where are my tires, but, but you know, 35 years later, that was traditionally like a school program, you right. know, uh, is, that, is that something you have taken over? And then the other question I had a, about was the, the culinary program, and I, I see you're working with Mount San Jacinto uh, as well, which is great, but I, I'm sure you're familiar with the facilities that uh, the district has. So. Yes, outstanding facilities, But um, yes. kind of curious about, about that. And then the other little reflection I had was I'm, I'm curious about uh, the student selection. Do the students apply directly through the city or do they apply through their school sites? And would you say there's a balance of children from the various school sites? Okay, That's answering that last, uh, yeah, no, answer that last question. Are you asking uh, whether the students apply for any of the programs? Yeah, in okay. general, if it's, if it's connected to a, uh, you know, a, a high school level program do they apply directly through the city to the city or do they apply through their school site and are recommended say by their school administration so they apply directly to the city for our city programs okay we do have a strong relationship with the school district so we do sometimes get bulk students who are informed through the school district mm -hmm. where to apply got it okay so hopefully i answered that question mm -hmm. Uh, number two, yes, the school district has an outstanding um, culinary facility. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, our first year that the program was in force, we actually used that facility. Okay. Great. Okay, so who wouldn't want to be in there? Right. right. <laughs> okay, that's number one. Right. Uh, and the third question was... Going back, going backwards, and I get, I'm sorry to throw a lot at no, you once. You're, you did great, by the way. Uh, the science fair, was that, is that in collaboration, or is that something you guys have that essentially taken over? That is separate. And, you know, science fairs are slowly uh, becoming not as popular. Right. Okay, right. unfortunately. Yeah. I, you know, uh, they're just not as popular as days of yore. So we're trying to figure out how we do that better. One of the ways that we are considering, and we're most likely going to move in, the participants in our um, STEM programs, mm -hmm. maybe we gear it to them solely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, that's what we're doing. So no, we don't. We're not in collaboration with right. the school district. Well, it sounds and like you filled an important void. As hopefully. some of these, some of these competitions and programs have, have again, they've kind of vanished or diminished to some extent. Well, yeah, I appreciate hopefully. all the information. Thank of you. Of course. And, and I would like, I want to invite everyone to our college fair, September, Saturday, September 23rd. It takes up two floors of the mall inside. Um, we've had schools come for 15 years. We have all the UCs there and we have half of the Cal States there. All military branches and academies are there. And so we're Along with truck driving schools, we have all the Ivy League schools there. Along with uh, phlebotomy school, we have dog grooming school. So we're really proud of that event. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Otto. Oh, and one more, and we see it as short-term and long-term economic development. The short-term, when a young person goes to that college fair, is they're helping the tax base, right? They're they're going to the movies, they're buying clothes that day. And the long term is we hope that they find their niche and their skill and they come back to the city of Temecula and apply that trade. So that's the long term economic development. Charles, the, um, thanks for the invitation to that too. And of course. fortunately, as my daughters went through our school district in the city, we've attended a few times. And um, 
um, one of them came back, so that's good. <laughs> that's <laughs> and all of them used the mall quite a bit. Right. So, thanks for a great presentation. I think that I agree with all the um, commissioners, the comments they made in terms of the breadth of the program. You know, I've been familiar with a lot of aspects of the program, but when you put it all together in that presentation, it, it's, a, it's a big big scope of programs, and that, that's one thing to be proud of. And then I think the other thing that, the two things that stand out to me is your, your cooperation and partnerships with businesses, with yes. the school districts, the MSJC, um, TVUSD, and I know to a certain extent a lot of our private um, schools also are involved yeah. in homeschooling and all of that. So um, I know you do a great job with those partnerships. And then finally, the, the things that you said about, you know, cities the size of Detroit, you know, calling little Temecula, trying to figure out how, how are you doing this with your intern program says a lot because mm -hmm. a lot of the programs you mentioned um, are, you know, top of the line, blue ribbon programs that we provide in Temecula, which reflects what we do in TCSD and um, it's just a, a spectacular program, Charles. Just keep up the great work, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Wow. The, you, this is just such a thorough program. I mean, helping from, you know, our middle schoolers all the way up to college, uh, college-bound, trade school-bound, professionals, vocational. Very thorough. I'm very impressed. Uh, I, I have a, my daughter. I had learned about the internship program from Commissioner Borgeson, uh, whose children had, not children, they're young adults. Yeah. They're still children. <laughs> I had, had gone through the internship program, and my daughter's currently an intern, and uh, the growth I've seen from her, unfortunately, some of our students that were in college during the COVID distance learning, there were no internship opportunities. and. So this has just been such a, I've seen so much growth in her and just being here with the city, the, um, the, the freeness in which our employees pour into these interns and give them guidance um, has just been so invaluable. I've just seen her grow and um, really develop some direction on where she wants to go though as she's graduated. So I can't thank you enough for providing that opportunity and that program for our young people. And my hope is that that will bring them back home to Temecula after they graduate. That's, that's the plan, right? It is, it that's is. That's the plan. So I have one more I'm gonna be emailing you about. Okay. So. All right, well yeah. thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. Um, it's just so, so thorough and I appreciate hearing it from you because we knew bits and pieces of what our workforce development program did, but right. seeing it just all together and seeing how it all works together was just um, very helpful, thank you. Wonderful, and thank you for the opportunity. If I can interject, um, Don just reminded me that our own commission secretary, Tracy Quartz, was one of Charles's interns with That's Yvette, right. if I recall correctly, in human services. That's right. Yes, uh, back in 2011, <laughs> um, when I had first graduated from high school and started going to college, I was going for sociology, and I found an advertisement about an internship in human services, and it said City of Temecula, and I'm like, okay, City of Temecula. Came to my interview, Charles Walker, Yvette Martinez, they were here at City Hall. I interned uh, with them for six months before Don stole me for a part-time rec assistant job, and... Here I am 11 and a half years later, 12 and a half years later, but so it all worked out. <laughs> wow. Certainly did. Thank and you. you met your husband here. That's a, an additional perk, yes. <laughs> Life-changing internships with Charles Walker. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> it, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I think, you know, we, uh, we, we talk about the Temecula way, and I think this just speaks about the Temecula way, the compassion, the givingness, the heart of our staff to, to uplift that next generation of leaders in, in our community. So thank you very much. Of course. You know, and I would also just add uh, from a previous meeting we were discussing kind of the role of community services and how mm -hmm. that plays into public safety. And I would just say, you know, Charles's programs are a prime example of where we look at, you know, the more opportunity kids have, the more professional outlets they have, the more educational advancement opportunities they have, 
the less likely they are to run into problems later down the road of the sort that involve mm -hmm. public safety. So this is one more way that we consider our department to be the proactive side of public safety where we're trying to prevent problems mm -hmm. before they occur. I'm mentioning public safety. Do you ever connect with our explorer post for fire and police to... Um, Oh, we work uh, very well with uh, Matt Hayes, um, Captain Matt Hayes, but um, explore programs in the past, but not recently. Okay, okay. I know I was just questioning that might be um, a, a, a gap. Maybe we're- I'm, I'm sure it is. We're always looking ways to complement and supplement. Um, if you have any suggestions, we will jump on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very, I, you, you're doing a lot. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming here tonight. We really appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Wow. Now with that, we're going to go to our con uh, to our division reports. I'm ready to go to the consent calendar. <laughs> we're going to go to our division reports. We have our community services uh, commission report. We have, let's see, our recreation. We'll start with recreation. We have Andrew, now correct me if I'm wrong, I'm gonna say Formentera. That's exactly right, exactly how you see it. <laughs> awesome, thank so, you. Andrew, if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself and giving a little bit of your background. Absolutely, well, uh, first of all, good evening everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Formentera, I'm a Temecula, Temecula Community Services Assistant for our sports division. Uh, I've been in community service since about 2013 and uh, now I work with uh, sports division with uh, Sergio right over there. So yeah, I've been with, uh, with the city uh, since 2013. Great, thank you. Great Absolutely. to have you here with us tonight. Well, thank you for having me. We'll be nice. <laughs> well, I'll be giving you all the first portion uh, of our recap of what our TCSD department has been up to for the month of March. Starting off in aquatics, we would like to say welcome aboard to the 28 new aquatics team members that have been hired for the summer season. These new team members have begun their pre-season training in CPR, AED, emergency oxygen, and in-water rescue. This year, the aquatics division will play host to the IE Water Safety Task Force to participate in the Water Safety Challenge. This will take place on May 27th. And a big congratulations to the aquatics team for receiving another award on April 3rd from the California Parks and Recreation Society for Innovative Programming, which is recognizing their hiring workshops and their tryout clinic. Uh, the month of March also saw the aquatics team training and refining their CPR skills with various uh, critical thinking exercises and complete care situations. The month of March was a very busy one for uh, the contract classes division. Almost 6,000 total participants were able to enjoy the many different class offerings in the city. As you can see, there are over 373 classes that were being offered to the community. These classes included preschool, kinder enrichment, youth and teen enrichment, performing arts, senior classes, sports and fitness, special interests, and visual arts. Spring break camps were a huge success with offerings such as culinary camps, flag football camps, and junior pickleball camps. The Summer and Fall 2023 Activity Guide has now officially been mailed to all Temecula residents. And also, be sure to come by and visit and say hi at the Community Services Expo. This is a great place for the family to come and meet our city staff and instructors and to learn about the programs that are offered in the Activity Guide. This is a free event with lots of activities for the family, so mark your calendars for Saturday, April 29th. Uh, at the moment, the CRC is closed due to ongoing construction. Uh, CRC staff are hard at work, though, still planning for summer activities, which also include the summer day camp. The Scooter Jam was a great success. On Saturday, March 25th, uh, the, sc the Scooter community enjoyed music, refreshments, and prize giveaways with the local legend Jeff Waddleton emceeing the activities. Uh, a big thank you to the Scooter Zone for donating the prizes and giveaways. The next Scooter Jam will be on May 13th. The Teen Zone is temporarily closed for renovations through May 2023. Teen Zone activities, however, are still fully operational at the Ronald H. Roberts Temecula Library and the Temecula Skate Park. Some activities for March included gnome crafts, 
uh, paint marbling, and a Mario Kart tournament. The Teen Zone seasonal theme boxes are still continuing with teens able to complete those boxes in the comforts of their own home. The Teen Zone also had a booth at the annual Teen Egg Hunt. CRC staff were able to share information about the Teen Zone, as well as providing fun giveaways uh, throughout the night. The homeless outreach team have been working tire tirelessly to assist the community. Four illegal encampments were identified with one encampment being fully removed. And six street exits have been totaled for the month of March, which bring the year to date total now to 24 street exits. So um, just wanted to highlight one of those uh, uh, special things that the outreach team did. Uh, so a special thanks to the SWAG team for connecting a Temecula client who has been homeless for more than 17 years and helping him move into his permanent supportive housing unit in Riverside. So now moving on to the library, the month of March has seen a total door count of 20,823. Library staff hosted in-person programs, which included uh, Read with Pete the Cat Party, the Garden Expo and Plant Swap, and Preschool Story Times. Be sure to check out the upcoming Poetry Night on Thursday, April 27th. The Ronald Reagan Sports Park saw improvement with the installation of the new LED retrofit lighting at the north-south fields, and the roof of the restroom building at the skate park has been replaced. So moving on to the sports division, although we needed the rain, we are very happy to have some sunshine again. Uh, the baseball and softball activities were all impacted by the rain in the month of March, but teams are very excited and eager to get out and play. The local youth baseball, softball, and soccer league spring seasons are all, all currently underway, and the upcoming month of April also shows a full weekend of youth baseball tournaments. Here's a small recap of some of the special events uh, for the month of March. Special events team successfully hosted a variety of events that included the Temecula Special Games, the Teen Egg Hunt at Somers Bend, and the annual favorite Easter Egg Hunt. So looking ahead at some special events in the near future, Earth and Arbor Day celebration will take place on April 22nd. The SMER Research One Solar Project ribbon cutting will take place on April 25th. And the special events team is gearing up to host one of my personal favorite events, the Temecula Rod Run, which will take place on May 5th and May 6th at Old Town Temecula. Uh, looking at the theater, Temecula Presents had a successful month with uh, several sold out shows. These shows saw 949 patrons, patrons in attendance. Performances for the month of March included the Great Oak High School Symphonic Group and Jazz Ensemble, Billy Nation, Billy Joel Tribute, the SpongeBob Musical, the Carpenter's Legacy, and the 11th Annual Jazz Festival. The 11th Annual Jazz Festival was dedicated to longtime piano player Keith Drost, who unfortunately passed away in January. Programming at the Merck continued with their At the Merck shows. Performances for the month of March included Country Live at the Merck, Speakeasy at the Merck, Brazilian and Latin Jazz, Stand-Up Comedy, and Jazz at the Merck. In total, the theater and Merck saw a total attendance of 5,605 patrons. So this now concludes the first section of our report, and we will be happy to answer any questions you may all have. Great. Thank you, Andrew. No problem. We will start with Vice Chair. Great job, Andrew. Um, good to see the sports teams getting back out after a a rainy first part of the season, so um, good luck and glad to see they're out there again with the sun. Um, just always taken back by the number of cl the number of classes offered, and then that you you know you expand that out to the the number of kids that are involved in those and adults, and then going back to what the director said about. That's what we do, you know, we keep people involved and it's just, just absolutely amazing. Um, wanted to ask a, a couple of questions. Um, the first one uh, was for CRC, um, is it on schedule? Um, yes, the CRC is on relative schedule. We had a slight rain delay, but it's still anticipated to open in okay. time for full summer programming. Okay. That was, that was my main question. And then, um, is Expo in Town Square? And, and there's no street closures for that? It's just, 
It just takes up the park zone? It will be in Town Square Park and also in the Civic Center quad. We will have okay. a few performances by some of our performing arts classes on the front steps of City Hall. So we will be closing Mercedes and the Main Street Y, like we awesome. do with many of our events taking place out front. Okay, great. Okay, thanks, thanks very much. Thank you, Vice Chair Audie. Vice, or Commissioner Kingsley. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate the report. Uh, very well, well spoken. Uh, I think you have an announcer's voice, so with your uh, sports uh, work, uh, that could be another direction you may go down the line. Who knows, right? Uh, good, good stuff. Um, again, you covered a lot. Uh, basically, I'm glad to see, say, essentially 6,000 participants. That's awesome. And uh, glad to see that the egg hunts were very successful. So uh, appreciate the updates we've had on those. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Hall. Thank you, Andrew. I'm very happy to receive the community service guide. I looked through so many classes, again, from babies all the way to seniors. It's really, you can find things to do for everyone in the town. It's a lot of classes I want to take if I have time. So thank you again. One question is for the expo, is this uh, the first time or we've had this in the past before COVID? So funny you ask that. This used to be an annual event way before my time, but the last time we hosted it was actually in 2012, which was the first year I worked it. So it's been a long time coming to bring this back. We were planning to bring it back in 2020, but unfortunately we were unable to. So this is uh, a long time coming to bring it back. So I, it's gonna be similar to what we've done in the past. It's taken place at various locations and city parks before. So we're excited to have it back. We're hoping for a great turnout since it is the first time we've done it in many, many years. Yeah, thank you. And I hope that this will bring more awareness for our community and we'll see more participation in the other programs. Thank you. I was told when I'd go last, I'm supposed to ask the hard-hitting questions. <laughs> so um, on your first slide, you had 856 lap swims. I don't know what that means. Um, so at the pool at the CRC, we do lap swim, public lap swim. And um, it used to be just open to the public. Anybody could kind of wander in. You might get there and find space. You might get there and not find space. Sometimes you wait on the deck. Sometimes yeah. people share lanes. Sometimes they don't. Um, but when COVID hit, the team, the aquatics team actually developed a new way of doing lap swim where you go online ahead of time and you actually book your slot. Uh -huh. So you book your lane and then you book whether you want a um, half an hour or an hour slot. And then when you show up, there's your space. Um, now we can take, if there's space available, we do take drop-ins. So if you happen to show up, you didn't have a chance to reserve, you can walk in and see if there's space available. But um, it's created a whole new way for people to enjoy lap swim and know that they have a space when they show up. That's, a, that's pretty impressive. We have a very dedicated lap swim crew. They, um, it's actually Katrina. <laughs> I should have just asked you. Katrina is a member of our master swim program, so I'll just hand it off. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, the lap swim, the reservations are um, just, I mean, it's a huge game changer when yeah. you want to show up and you guarantee a space. It yeah. kind of cuts off the awkward, you know, tapping someone on the head while they're in the zone. <laughs> yeah. You know, can I see your lane? Um, so it has opened up a lot of um, just, very organized and, and it also is just very seamless when you get there um, and it's very popular like you have to get on and and compete for your spot yeah. online and yeah so that they book up that's why I learned how to flip turn so people couldn't stop me I would just come <laughs> to the wall and turn and they wouldn't uh, um, do that um, I also wanted to comment on the, the classes and um, <clears throat> I was at one of the HOA meetings from my community and it um, a bunch of the people were talking about how the classes really save them during the summers and spring breaks because they have a gap in their their daycare and so it allows them to fill the summers and spring breaks and has a real impact on the community beyond just having a good time it really impacts families no we, we love hearing that for sure mm -hmm. and then last thing my wife really enjoyed the plant swap at the library so thank you Commissioner Castro. Thank you, Andrew, for your 
great presentation. We appreciate you having you here with that tonight. The only bit I have to share is that, because we talked about our theater and our classes, uh, I have a new client that just recently moved here from Georgia, and I wanted to, since I don't know anybody, I wanted to share Temecula with them, and we went out to one of the wineries and did wine tasting and lunch, and they were sharing about how they had heard about Temecula, and they are so in love with it having been here. They just went on about the theater, the different productions we have, the music, the art, then they went into the um, recreational activities, the bikes, the classes, just so in love. A everything I heard them talking about that they're in love with about Temecula, I'm like, yeah, TCSD did that, yeah, they did that, yeah, that too, yep, that one, right there, oh, no, no, that one's not ours. So just uh, I I impressed hearing um, love for TCSD from the eyes of a new resident. So thank you very much, Andrew. And we'll go on to our cultural arts presentation and report from Katrina Thorson. Good evening again. Um, my name is Katrina Thorson. I'm a multimedia coordinator for um, the community services department. I can give you like a brief overview as well. Um, I know I've met a few of you before, but um, I know there are some new faces on commission and I, I haven't been here since you guys joined us, so welcome. <laughs> um, and I have been with the city since 2014 um, and started off with the museum and also arts and culture and then classes and now I'm um, with the outreach, community outreach. So I kind of have a little bit, um, especially with the second section of cultural arts, um, I've worked in um, a lot of the areas here and I'm excited to share with you what we've been up to for um, the, last, the past month in March. Um, so we'll start off with arts and culture. Um, we had art nights at the beginning of the month, which is previously was art off the walls. Um, we rebranded it, uh, and we saw a uh, wonderful turnout of over 100 guests. This is a great uh, program for our supporting our local artists in the community. Um, we have two sections. One is outdoors um, that people can sell their artwork, and one inside the Merc, the reception for a featured artist of the month. And this month was Katinka Clement Smith. Um, and you might notice right in the picture right behind her, those poppies. It's a familiar looking artwork. If you've traveled down Front Street in Old Town, that piece is one of the utility box pieces um, in front of Palomar. And we also have multiple different um, galleries throughout the city uh, for, to feature other artists. We have the Rotunda Gallery uh, at the Temecula Valley Museum. And that hosted the Multilingual Voices by artist Richard Allen May III. And that exhibit represents um, his unique style with inspiration from poetry and listening to jazz and R&B soul music. And there is a gallery at the Ronald H. Roberts Temecula Public Library. Um, and this was featuring the artist Tashina Katsuke. And it was a, pho a photographic series presenting hands holding objects to tell the stories of the individual. Uh, the Civic Center Gallery, which is right out in the hallway here, um, featured the artist Tamara Gerard, and that was a, uh, she's an award-winning graphic designer, oil painter and muralist, and it, um, it featured beautiful landscapes. And finally, at the Merck, uh, we have Katinka Clement Smith's very colorful um, paintings that were on display there. So for community outreach, we, uh, starting off with social media, we posted three reels through the month and um, we saw um, a very large increase, or a large amount of reaches for the month. Um, that's how the accounts that viewed any of our, um, our, our reels, our videos, or our posts. The reels that we did for the month of March was advertising the Teen Egg Hunt, which is the Do You Feel Bonita screenshot that we have there, and the Spring Break, break Camps, which is the other screenshot that you see down there. And we also did a reel advertising the new name of Temecula Art Nights. Uh, we also enjoyed um, celebrating the month, Women's History Month by featuring um, various inspirational, influential women in Temecula's past um, and present. We started, it was three weeks, and we highlighted uh, different wish women each week. Uh, we began with pioneer, uh, pioneering women who formed Temecula Valley's deep roots. 
followed by Honorable City Hood Founders, and concluded with Admiral Women of Temecula today. And um, that, those posts were also um, performed well, and we had a lot of engagement and people uh, acknowledging the, the impact that these women had on the city. Um, and then a couple of stats there for you. We, we um, sent out some e-blasts that resulted in 8,000 email opens. We just like to get the word out to people in any way we can. So we use social media, we use e-blasts, we use um, flyers, posters, anything. Um, and then the upcoming projects we have in process, in progress, uh, individual class instructor videos. So this is an exciting, exciting but big project that we are doing to highlight all of our instructors. Um, and we're gonna put it on our website so people, when they're interested in signing up their, their child in a class, they can get a little interview with the instructor, they see some, some footage from the class to kind of get a feel of what it would be like uh, to sign their child up. So that one is in the, in, in the works. Um, also, our park adventures, a next episode featuring Vale Ranch Park, to our Temecula alumni series, which is um, for uh, Mayor Schwenk. And we have a couple reels coming up as well for the next month. We're gonna be doing a reel for Arbor Day, or sorry, this month now. Um, Arbor Day and one highlighting our Welcome Center. And I'm pleased to present about the California Parks and Recreation Society conference that we just came back from last week. Um, the community outreach team won Award of Excellence for that Park Adventure series. Um, if, if you're not familiar, the Park Adventure series is like mini commercials for our parks around um, Temecula and with Jeff Lawrence at, um, as the host. He's um, our manager in the, or my manager in the department. And um, we were able to uh, sit at the best of the best booth, which is in the expo hall. And we got approached by lots of different cities and people interested to see about what we're doing. Um, we also got a lot of people that were impressed with our programs. Um, a couple of people that were actually moving to Temecula that were able to talk to us as well. And finally, we presented um, about municipal marketing um, in, a room of 144 atten 154 attendees, sorry. Uh, it was very successful. Um, it was very exciting to present to all cities from all around California. We got a lot of feedback, positive feedback, a lot of questions from other cities on how, um, on recommendations and our opinions on, on their marketing. Um, so that was a very exciting week for us. And then for our inclusive services, um, they had a fun night with High Hopes Bowling Night at Temecula Lanes. Um, they have 50 participants and they enjoy bowling, arcades, pool, air hockey, and spending time with their friends. The next event, or I, the next event happened um, on April 7th, this past Friday. The Viticulture Spring Session, um, quite a mouthful of the title, the Spring Global Citizens Viticulture and Horticulture Vocational Program uh, began, began last week. Uh, it has 10 participants and it occurs every week, twice a week, um, until May 25th. The Youth Advisory Council um, hosted a karaoke and self-care day at the Mary Phillips Senior Center. Um, they were able to sing in front of their uh, friends and students presented self-awareness happiness assessment worksheet um, and shared their responses. They were able to go closer together as a group and build personal development. The senior services, um, the AARP tax aid program was held on, it, it's held every Friday um, and it ended on April 14th. This program offers a free in-person tax um, preparation and now that the um, tax deadline has approached. Um, they, they were full up until then, and we will be offering that again next tax season. The senior silver shuttle um, traveled to uh, Target, Assistance League, Rosa's Cafe, and Rubio's. They, uh, seniors enjoy dining out with their friends, and transportation is provided by the electric vehicle. A total of 30 participants uh, went on this month's trip. In the Senior Arts and Crafts Program, um, everyone made lucky coins in honor of St. Patrick's Day. And the question for the project was, if you had a pot of gold, what would you buy? And they wrote down their answers. Um, and 
I'm not sure if they're still on display, display at the Senior Center, but um, for, for St. Patrick's Day they were. Okay, warm center. The Mary Phillips Senior Center continued to be a warm center for the winter. Um, it was a very cold winter this year. Um, it's kind of nice to be have a nice warm day today. Um, the warm center had 420 participants and the it will transition to a cool center come June. The senior center um, had, oh, moved to the Temecula Community Center um, while construction is going on over at the Mary Phillips Senior Center. Um, so seamlessly, a seamless transition, no programs were halted in uh, the reopening of, this Temecula, of the Senior Center at the Temecula Community Center. Um, they were still able to accommodate all the essential services um, and the, they will be at the, senior, the Temecula Community Center um, until renovations are completed. So the Temecula Valley Museum uh, had, has had a new exhibit for the month of March, and it highlighted middle and high school art for the Temecula Valley Unified School District. And there was also a reception held um, for the students that had their artwork up at the museum, um, and that they hosted about 117 uh, guests in this event. And for the curator's report, the Earl Stanley Gardner's estate planning um, was something that had been in the works with the University of Texas, and the university agreed to send the museum the collection relating to the life and career of the famous writer Earl Stanley Gardner. Uh, we do have a, a section um, on Earl Stanley Gardner at the museum right now, uh, so this will be able to enhance that, that exhibit. Um, the Temecula Valley historian, historian section here, um, that is in reference to a very influential historian in our community, um, Daryl Farnbach. He was a dedicated um, preservationist and he was in, instrumental in the, um, to acquire the Vale Ranch headquarters. Um, and the, the note that we have here from our museum's manager was the citizens, citizens of Temecula Valley are forever indebted to Daryl Farnbach for his deep appreciation of Temecula's history for his tremendous enthusiasm to share that history and for his vision and foresight in saving an important historical treasure for the benefit of future generations. And his memorial service will be held on Wednesday, April 12th at Vail headquarters at 11 a.m. Women of Ink, that was the um, exhibit that ended early in March. So the last weekend that it was there, they had a presentation um, from a local tattoo artist, Melissa Freeman. Temecula Culture Days was also held. That's a monthly event, event celebrating different cultures from around the world. And in March, uh, we celebrated Israel. They had Israel-inspired food tastings and a free art lesson by Bigfoot Art Classes. And to wrap up the Women of Ink programming, um, there was a crazy cool and realistic temporary tattoo event um, by Bigfoot Art Classes and Bigfoot Graphics. The Emerging Artists Mural in, the Sam, in Sam Hicks Monument Park was changed out, um, celebrating the uh, Cesar Chavez Day. And this beautiful mural was created by students at Great Oak High School, and, and it's coordinated by Tony Mormarco of Bigfoot Graphics. And uh, this mural is, will be up throughout the month of April as well. So if you haven't had a chance to go check it out, I would recommend going. Um, and there was a reception, is, um, a, for these students as well. Upcoming programs for the Temecula Valley Museum. The new exhibit is currently on display. It's Through Darkness to Light, and these are photographs of the Underground Railroad. The, uh, there is going to be a gallery talk in conjunction with this exhibit from textile artist Allison Allen, and she will be having um, her emancipated quilts on this, or her pictorial quilts um, by emancipated slaves on, or depicting emancipated slaves on display at this text, or this gallery talk. Art Nights is coming up again um, Friday, May 12th, and this featured artist is Daniel Santos, and Temecula Culture Days will be on May 13th, celebrating the Czech Republic. 
for workforce development. Uh, we heard of, of all the wonderful things that they um, are doing. Um, so in March, there were three meetings um, for the Youth Innovator, Innovators Program. And these students facilitate youth programs and city events um, that are listed here on the slide. The Junior STEM program was held on Wednesday, March 8th. The theme this month was environmental science. Um, and 17 middle school students benefited from this program. The internship and fellowship program, which is a year-round um, undergraduate and offer to undergraduate and graduate students. Um, and the interns are currently in community services, economic development, emergency man management, finance, IT, and public works here in the city. And that concludes this portion of the report, and I am happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Katrina. And we will start with Commissioner Hall. Thank you, Katrina. And I have two questions. The first one is, for those artists, for example, the featured artists, uh, what's the process of selecting them? Um, sorry, so there is, uh, there's an application process and there is a, um, a committee that an artist, a committee that selects the artists that are going to be on display at the various locations. Um, they did just release a um, e-blast and um, I, I believe a social media post on the museum's page advertising for application for the upcoming season for next year, 2024. So this towards our local artist community? Yes. Okay. Yeah. There's an interest list and any artist that has expressed an interest is, is on that um, email list that they, they send it to. Yeah. Very good. And the second one is for the warm center. You said there were 400 people participated. And what do they do when they arrive at the warm center? So the WARM Center is um, a resource for those who um, may not have like access to heat um, or things for that um, you would you would need to be comfortable in when it's very cold outside or very hot outside. So um, the senior center opens our doors to those that, that are in need um, for them to have a, a meal to enjoy the heat and the. the amenities that they provide at the senior center. I don't know if you want to elaborate. So that um, the warm center and cool center programs are also with the county. Mm -hmm. So basically the county keeps track of where these warm and cool centers are in all the cities and we collaborate and tell them when we're going to be open and the county can also tell us when to activate. So for example, the cool center starts activating June 1st, but if we had really hot weather earlier in May, then the county would say, hey, we're activating the cool centers and then we would open the doors. And anyone can come in the senior center for the warmer cool center. They don't have to be a senior. So you can okay. come in and like during the cool center, you get a bottle of water and you can just basically sit inside and be cool and comfortable throughout the day. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Hall. Vice Chair Audie. Thanks, Katrina. Great having you. Good report. Um, I, I just, again, um, amazing um, awards we receive at um, CPRS and just says everything about this division how um, special it is and it's not something that just happens in isolation it seems to happen every time so um, congratulations for keeping that streak going I'm really interested in um, the the STEM program and how it just kind of, in your presentation, it just, there's the STEM program and then there was a bunch of art around it. So we really do provide STEAM um, and um, I really um, feel like there's a connection with the workforce um, programs too in that um, we're really merging oftentimes science and art and, and those, those types of things, technology. Um, the one thing I think that we, we sometimes forget about the STEM is the engineering and its practical um, effects that it can have in a city. 
So we, we're loaded here with engineers who are involved in city planning and how that, that works with how a city works and how the built environment um, affects our complete environment. So um, I just was impressed with how that, that kind of came out and, and struck me today. And you know, it is very, very well-rounded. So thanks again, Katrina, great report. Thank you, Katrina. Appreciate the report. Nice to meet you tonight, as well as uh, as Andrew, uh, as one of the one of the newbies, right? Uh, commissioners, myself. Uh, no, no real questions. Again, congratulations on the awards, the entire department um, for TCSD. Uh, thank you for sharing those. Uh, I'm glad to see we continue to innovate uh, with the class instructor videos. I think that's great uh, to give people a sense of what they can expect, and also. Uh, since I do follow community services department on social media, uh, as a relatively new social media participant, uh, I did see some of the women's history uh, posts. And so thank you for sharing those because they were very informative. Having been over to the Mary Phillips Senior Center, I learned a little bit more about Mary Phillips, for example. So a uh, great job of tying that in uh, last month with women's history. So thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner Kaska? have any questions, but congratulations on the award. That's quite the achievement. Uh, I did go to the North Macedonia Culture Day, and I highly recommend the baklava. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kaska. And I will add my congratulations to, to everyone. You're quite an accomplishment. You have a lot to be proud of. Thank you. I wanted to add on the reels. Okay, the one with Willa. Nailed it. Nailed it. That one and the, the Bonita, that was pretty close. But I just, I, Willa is amazing on camera. She's very, very talented. Well, and the, the gentleman that was the, the, was it Pedro Pass? Yeah. That, oh, the, yeah. He did great, too. <laughs> I, I was just so impressed with the creativity to uh, use that meme uh, to promote our spring camps and, uh, that, the talent. The, the uh, man that was the Pedro Pascal one is actually one of our instructors. Um, and he did, we, when we were doing the instructor videos, um, the interviews, he mentioned that how he was an actor. And I was like, I'm going to contact <laughs> oh. you. So he was more than willing and, and super happy to be included in the video. Um, when we make our reels, we really try to branch out. And I mean, Will is this the best little actress that we, <laughs> but we try to include everybody and it was exciting to be able to use an instructor in one of our videos as well. Yeah, yeah Willa's degree in communications shines. She was also a presenter at the education sessions at CPRS as well as our marketing team. Um, so if you haven't seen her in the infomercial we made for Park Packs last year, it's hilarious. Oh, I remember that one. I loved that one. She's. You guys need to give her a, a, an acting raise. <laughs> Tell city council that. They can just write that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I, I love our art nights, as usual. Um, I'm, now I have another. I love Katinka's um, art. It's so bright and vibrant. And the one that's the art mural box, I'm trying to. I haven't told my husband, but I think I'm going to buy it. Um, I have to break that one to him. He might not be so willing to go to art nights anymore. <laughs> so uh, I l love the art nights. Uh, I did have some feedback um, talking with people and artists at this last art night. And one of their questions and questions, recommendations, was um, questioning why it's, it's 5 to 7, if there was a possibility to make it later so it coincided more with the traffic from the theater and traffic with people getting off work and being down there to eat dinner that maybe there we'd get more people walking in and visiting. We have had it at later times before. The theater curtain is usually 7.30, um, 8 o'clock okay. max. So people usually get in their seats 30 minutes prior to curtain. However, um, the later we go, the more dead it is. So we okay. tried to pitch it up a little bit so it's like after school, before dinner, that okay. kind of time frame. And 
since we have entertainment and, you know, it gets dark and yeah. at least before, um, we want to be, you know, cognizant that our family-friendly event ends before anything else yeah. happens in the yeah. evening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, got it. Got it. Thank you very much. All right, and I will add, add a second um, to the innovation of doing the instructor videos. My, my kids are past taking the classes, but I would have found that very helpful. Had we had YouTube and all that back then, wow, what a convenience, especially for our parents that work. Because I do remember going um, back in the early days at Temecula Hills Park, the expo. I remember going to that to see the different classes and what we had. And um, so that would have been very handy back then to have been able to just for working parents to go on YouTube and watch that. So thank you very much. We had a little bit of the instructor videos during COVID with the virtual um, website as well. Okay. So that kind of sparked the idea. I think, I think it's great. I, I mean, uh, I, I've talked before, especially during the QLMP, we're going, we're, we were a community that we had one parent at home. There, were, there was a lot of stay-at-home moms, and we were a community built on that. And times have changed, and the new norm is both parents not being at home, both parents being in the workplace. And so it's hard. You know, when you have only two days off a week, it's hard to say, okay, we're going to go down to the expo to meet the instructors. So having that alternative is going to be great for our parents. So thank you for thinking of that. Okay, moving along on our agenda, we'll go to our consent calendar. We have one item, which is to approve our action minutes for March 13th, 2023. Do I have a motion to approve? Move to approve. And a second? Second. All right. So we have a motion from Vice Chair Audi and a second from Commissioner Kingsburg. So I will take a roll call vote. Commissioner Castro? Aye. Commissioner Hawks? Aye. Commissioner Kingsburg? Aye. Vice Chair Audi? Aye. And Chairperson Sizemore? Aye. The motion is approved five to zero. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. We'll now go to our director's report. Director Russo? Good evening, everyone. <laughs> so um, a couple of things we've already talked about, but I just wanted to kind of add to it. Uh, the CPRS conference we went to last week, California Parks and Recreation Society. Um, that conference is held annually. Usually, historically, they would go between one year it's in Northern California, one year it's in Southern California. This year was the second in a row in Southern California, so we had the chance to go and bring kind of a big group. And um, we won three awards, as we've mentioned, which was just an incredible honor. One for innovative hiring practices for our aquatics team because they really, um, there was a, a real shortage of aquatics professionals. And so particularly last year, we were struggling to fill those seats. And so they developed some really innovative practices to start recruiting and retention and keep people on board and um, bring in junior guards and start developing them early so they're in the pipeline. So they just, they've had a really creative approach to kind of an annoying problem. So that was lovely. And then of course we received our uh, Excellence in Communications Awards for our marketing for the theater brochure, which was very exciting. It's a beautiful brochure. You've probably all seen your copies of it, but we just love that. And, um, and then also for our Around and About media series, which I know you've all had the pleasure of watching. And then in addition, we had two different staff presentations, which is, in and of itself, it's its own honor, because in order to get to present at this conference, you have to apply, and you have to turn in a pretty detailed plan of what you're going to present, what your method is going to be of conveying information, what the learning objectives are for the, the audience, uh, how you plan on engaging the audience. It's, it's a pretty in detailed process, and we had, um, two separate staff groups. Uh, Willa Augustine, who you all know from our events, actually did a collaborative presentation with her colleagues from the cities of Lake Elsinore, Menifee, and uh, Murrieta on how they collaborate amongst each other to make events better in the region. And then our fantastic uh, community relations team with Bea, Jeff, Katrina, and Mike got to present on uh, municipal marketing communications. And their presentation, like you kind of know when you're getting slotted into like you know, there's sometimes slots that just aren't as popular, particularly like the conference goes Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday morning, 
a lot of people are already leaving, they're not hanging out. They got a prime slot for their presentation and they got a big room, which tells you that CPRS is thinking, this is gonna be a popular one, and it was. They had over 150 people, standing room only. There were people like standing in the back, a couple people sitting on the floor. And uh, for me, the best part was afterwards, as Katrina mentioned, people came up to ask them questions. And it wasn't just onesie twosie. It was, there was a huge interest from other cities, staff, on what we do to market uh, the creative social media presence that we have. It included our print publications, um, campaigns where we pulled together multiple different types of marketing communications. And um, I told the team, you know, I think sometimes I take them for granted because they do such a good job. I've just come to kind of expect this level of like excellence from the team. And you know, that's, that holds true with most of our divisions in general. It's not just in this particular area, but this was the area we got to see highlighted and seeing them present to their colleagues and be this um, resource for questions and information. It was just so gratifying and it also really made me realize how um, truly exceptional our staff is. So it was a great moment. Um, I think the best part, as a lot of us discussed, was afterwards we would all just kind of hang out, chat, maybe go to dinner. And it gave a lot of us a chance to get to know each other in a way outside of the, the work environment too. So all in all, CPRS was a great experience, but particularly I just had to say I was incredibly impressed with the teams on all levels, not just the awards, but also the presentations. It was, it was fantastic. Okay. And that concludes my report. <laughs> all right, thank you, Director Russo. Now we'll go on to our commissioner reports and we will start with Commissioner Fastra. Um, I don't have anything beyond uh, wanting to congratulate the staff on a successful Easter egg hunt. There was a lot of really happy faces at the, I don't know the name of the park on La Serena. Temuku Hills Park. Temuku Hills Park. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of very happy kids there. That's all I have. Tracy, how many, about how many participants? You said we had 1,500 at each? Yeah, it was about 1,500 at each. And it was impressive to see at Temaku, we split it up into the separate age groups, and it was almost like an even amount in each zone. So, But it was nice to have uh, Commissioner Castro ride on by on his bike to <laughs> see how things were doing. Thank you. I was impressed that there's a, um, I was there last year too, um, the special needs area. That was uh, very nice to see. Uh, and allow access to everybody. Thank you. Commissioner Kingsford. Thank you, Chair Sizemore. Uh, first, I just wanted to publicly thank uh, fellow commissioners for presenting our commission report last month to City Council. Uh, I'm sorry I wasn't able to attend as I was visiting family out of state, but I understand the uh, report went quite well, and I did get a chance to, to view it and catch up on it. Um, this last month, I, I went by the museum and saw the uh, student art exhibit from uh, TVSD, and I was impressed with the fact that it covered uh, for multiple middle school students uh, across middle schools, uh, four high schools, a three comprehensive plus Rancho Vista alternative. And it was really student art from all levels, uh, you know, beginning art, art one, all the way to, you know, AP and IB art. So. Again, as I mentioned earlier in another uh, report, I, the, that partnership and collaboration with the school district is, is great. Um, I also attended the ribbon cutting uh, for the grand opening of the Old Town Police Station um, on March 30th. It was, a, as was shared in one of the reports, it was a well-attended event uh, by the officers at the station, city staff, and there were other fellow commissioners across commissions there. And, and obviously this is, in, Hugely important, as has been discussed at these meetings before, that to have a community policing element, to have visibility and accessibility and access um, to our citizens to build relationships and to monitor Old Town. And then finally, on a personal note, in terms of classes, I am a class participant this month. Uh, my wife and I have started a second pickleball class. We have graduated from beginning level last September to now beginning slash intermediate <laughs> this this month. Um, so enjoying getting out there with some structure and, and uh, continue to learn the game of pickleball. And I'm looking forward to the next three Wednesday classes. So thank you. That's great to hear. Um, Andrew is also a pickleball player. And uh, our sports team is going to be working on some developing some pickleball programming for when we finally open that, uh, that new facility. So... I'm going to have to try pickleball. 
I just keep hearing about it so much. I'm going to have to try it. First I got the bike. Next thing you know, I'm going to have the fix. Everyone who tries it seems to really enjoy it and get kind of, you know, they, they get into it. People seem to really, really get into it. I don't have time for another hobby, though. <laughs> Commissioner Hawks. Thank you, Chair. And first I want to say congratulations again to the team for getting three awards. It's really, I'm grateful to work with the team and you have a stellar team. Thank you so much. And then I have three things to report. I went also attended the police department ribbon cutting. I went there to show my support and appreciation to our law enforcement. And second, I signed up my children to the library's in and out reading program. I don't have to remind them. They will sign their logs automatically and ask me to sign. So that, I thought that's really a wonderful program to encourage children to read. And since the summer reading program is coming up, I want to make a suggestion to the staff, maybe can reach out to the local business to see if can get more certificates. That's always a hit. Kids love to spin the wheels and get those prize, especially for older kids, a pencil, just not that as exciting as a free meal from a restaurant. And lastly, I went to the Vail Ranch Park last week. Glad to see so many people there. Kids are playing the, at the playground, and I went to look at the trees that were planted a year ago. I'm happy to report they're all healthy. <laughs> Still quite young, but I look forward to seeing them when they get mature so we have a shaded path for bikers and walkers. So again, I appreciate all the wonderful work the staff do. Thank you. Vice Chiotti? I didn't have much, but a lot of things came up tonight that built my um, commissioner's report. So the first thing was the question, Commissioner Kastorak, about the masters, the, the swimming, the laps. So from 1989 to 2016, I was a lap swimmer at the rec center for the early group. And I'm very resentful that we didn't think of it, <laughs> but because it is very cold and fighting for those lanes and having people bump into you and there's like lanes that had a legendary story to them where swimmers would constantly you know swim on the wrong side of the lane do th miss the etiquette but that's an in that's a really interesting though and I think very smart because it is kind of stressful when you have to get down there and fight for a spot um, in years of putting my fins on to stay up with all the fast swimmers because that was the only lane open but um, so a great idea and um, I, I, I'm kind of curious I might just do it to see if I can get in there and compete compete for a spot <laughs> okay um, so what I've been doing mostly is um, been really excited about the proclamations and um, getting to attend those proclamations that are now at Ready Commission. Um, so for uh, Black History Month and Women's History Month, I was able, a group that I belong to, we were able to follow those up with a, a celebration of black history, a celebration of women's history, and got to coordinate a, a program with the city. I worked with Tracy Frick in having Bonnie Martland come out in the middle of a, a ride on the, um, Santa Gertrudis and Merida Creek Regional Trails. Stopped at Sam Hicks Park. Bonnie was dressed in character as one of Temecula's strong women um, and presented to us and it was really spectacular, really um, made the event um, go well. And on, on that note too, I, um, this is kind of a, maybe a, you know, setting, setting our sights on some goals. Um, I know you had the concept of Temecula moves uh, as a theme and so forth, but um, more and more looking at um, 
what we do infrastructure wise and um, connecting it with community services because we talk about all those activities the pickleball um, you know the the youth sports um, and more and more cycling is becoming a you know all age activity that we may, may want to get behind so that's one thing um, that I'm interested in and the other thing that goes along with that same talk to topic is the adopt a park program um, we're, we're a group that I belong to very fortunate to adopt a segment of the Santa Gertrudis Trail um, I would like to see maybe outreach and you know other marketing aspects of those community members and um, businesses that have adopted trails and parks and you know what are they doing to um, make those parks um, more beautiful more accessible and so on so I really like to see that kind of get marketed and then you know maybe we get more people adopting and and more people out there involved in, in making them better for the community so um, that was my um, my main mainly what, what I had on my report tonight and um, finally um, thanks for explaining the presentations at, at CPRS because um, you're right it, it takes a lot to present at events like that and when we have our our talented folks talk about our amazing programs and talk about our amazing community that does a lot for business here it does a lot for building the community and making it more positive and bringing more positivity to our community so thanks for that thank you vice chair Adi I think most of what I had to say has been throughout the other reports so I will just uh, go to uh, the end of our meeting and I wanted to um, adjourn tonight's meeting in memory of Daryl Farmer um, culture and history is very important to our department and um, Daryl and his wife Rebecca did have done so much to preserve the culture and history of our community uh, I had the opportunity once to take our voice our Cub Scouts to the History Center and have Daryl lead them on a two-hour tour that ended up being three and a half uh, his knowledge and passion of the history of our community was just um, amazing and to see him um, share it with our youth and to see them just absorb everything he shared to take that to three and a half hours just the more he was willing to share the more they were willing to listen to and um, I appreciate that and all you know all that we have of our history and culture preserved in the city thanks to him and uh, Rebecca's doing so I wanted to adjourn tonight's meeting in gratitude and memory for Daryl Farba and tonight's meeting is adjourned we will meet our next meeting will be in Monday May 8th 2023 6 p.m. here in council chambers